When objects have a density less than that of water, they float when you put them in water. And so, um, for example, the ping pong ball in your lab kit, if you put it in water, it's going to float. Most of it's going to float um, above the water because the ping pong ball has a very small density, a density much less than that of water. So, um, I am going to ask you to find the fraction of a sphere that is underwater. What is the fraction of a sphere that's underwater? And I'm going to give you two pieces of information. I'm going to tell you the, the um, sphere's mass, and I'm going to tell you uh, the sphere's radius. And from that, you're going to be able to figure out the fraction of the sphere that's underwater whenever we, um, we place it in the water to float, okay? So, in order to solve this problem, first we have to think about actually the free body diagram of our sphere because the free body diagram does not gonna, is not gonna go away. So the free body diagram of this sphere in water, well, it still has its weight directed downward, okay? But every object that is submerged in a liquid if it's suspended in the liquid, is going to experience a buoyant force. And the buoyant force is the force that the liquid is pushing back up on the object with. Um, you can kind of think about it as being like a normal force, but for, for liquids, it's the force that that liquid is exerting back on the object, okay, in the vertical direction. So um, this sphere is also going to experience a buoyant force pointing upward from the liquid on the uh, sphere. The buoyant force is always equal to the density of the fluid that your object is in times the volume of the fluid displaced. So how much of the fluid is that object pushing out of the way? And then we have to multiply it by g, by our acceleration due to gravity. So this changes if you're on a different planet, let's say. Okay, so that's the buoyant force. Every fluid is exerting a buoyant force on an object that's equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that gets displaced when the body is placed in water or any liquid, any fluid, times G, okay? So anytime you're in a bathtub, you experience a buoyant force. Anytime you go swimming, you experience a buoyant force. Um, the water is pushing back on you. That's actually what makes you feel um, like you weigh less whenever you go swimming. You're more buoyant. It's because of this buoyant force right here. Okay, so in order to find the fraction of our sphere that's underwater, we have to think about this buoyant force and actually we're gonna use Newton's second law again. Okay, Newton's second law applied to this body right here floating. So. We've got the sum of all of our forces in the y direction equals the mass times our acceleration in the y direction. We're floating. We're not moving up or down. We're not accelerating up or down, so the acceleration is zero, okay? So we've got our buoyant force upward, Fb, and we've got our weight downward. So Fb minus mg equals zero, okay? So to find the fraction of our sphere that's underwater, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this weight of my object to the other side. So I'm gonna have density of my fluid times volume of the fluid displaced times gravity, that's the buoyant force, has to equal mass of my object times gravity. Okay, so immediately we see that G cancels on both sides. And I wanna put this expression in terms of densities and volumes, but instead I have the mass of the object. So what can I do? Well, remember that density is equal to mass over volume. So if I solve this equation for mass, mass is equal to density times volume. So the mass of my sphere is going to equal the density of my sphere times its volume, okay? Well, that's just rearranging my equation for density. So here, where it says mass of the object, I can say that's also the density of the object times the volume of the object. And that has to equal density of my fluid times the volume of my fluid that's been displaced. Okay, 
fraction of my sphere underwater. So that's the fraction of the volume of my sphere that is underwater. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this for a ratio. And I'm gonna divide um, the density of the fluid to the other side. And then I'm gonna, div so I have volume of my fluid displaced equals density of my object over density of the fluid times the volume of my object. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by the volume of my object. Now I have this ratio that says that the density, or sorry, the volume of my fluid displaced divided by the volume of my object itself equals the density of the object divided by the density of the fluid. Okay, so the fraction of my sphere that's underwater is this ratio right here. That's the volume of the fluid that my sphere is displacing, okay? That's the volume of the fluid that the sphere is pushing away, and that's equivalent to the volume of the sphere that's underwater. That volume of the sphere that's underwater is the volume of the sphere that's pushing the liquid away, that's contributing to this buoyant force, okay? So this is the ratio that I'm looking for. Volume of the fluid displaced divided by the volume of the object. That will tell me the fraction of my object that's underwater. And then that has to equal the density of my object divided by the density of my fluid. Now, water has a density of, I'm gonna call it density sub W, rho sub W, of 100 kilograms per meter cubed. That's also the same as one gram per centimeter cubed, okay? So it doesn't matter what units we wanna use as long as we're consistent. So for the density of my fluid, I'm gonna use, that's water, the one gram per centimeter cubed. Then what about the density of my object? Well, we already learned how to find density. Density of my object, which is my sphere, is equal to its mass divided by its volume. So that's gonna equal its mass divided by the volume of a sphere, four thirds pi r cubed. And let's see, I haven't told you the mass of my sphere yet. The mass is going to be two grams. It's also the mass of your ping pong ball. And the radius of the sphere is going to be 2.02 centimeters, okay? So if I come over here, I've got my mass is two grams. And I'm gonna divide it by four thirds, four <laughs> thirds times pi 2.02 centimeters cubed. So then that gives me a density of my object of 5.79 times 10 to the minus two grams per centimeter cubed. So I take that density and I put it in right here. So I've got 5.79 times 10 to the minus two grams per centimeter cubed. And then I'm dividing it by, so that's the density of my object. And then I have to divide it by the density of my fluid, which was water. And then that gives me um, the fraction of my um, object that's underwater. So we've got grams per centimeters cubed canceling on top and bottom. And so then that leaves us with a fraction, again, of 5.79 times 10 to the minus two, because we're dividing it by one here. And that's, um, if we put that in decimal form, that's 0 0.0579, okay? or in a percentage form. So this is the fraction of my sphere that's underwater is this number here. 0 0.0579 of my sphere is underwater. If I put that in a percentage, multiply it by 100, that's 5.79%. So only about 6% of my sphere is going to be submerged underwater. The rest of it is going to be above water. So whenever you place your sphere here, <laughs> your ping pong ball in um, a cup of water, you're gonna see that the majority of it's gonna float, only a tiny little portion of it is gonna be submerged. Um, and that's because of the density of this object as it compares to the density of water.